Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It is day four of trying to live in Poland for $100. We have $68 left. We're still in the hotel from last night. But today I wanna to show you guys what really cheap accommodation looks like. Like if we go to the very cheapest place we can stay tonight, I wanna to show you what that looks like and what some of the telltale signs of cheap hostels are. Oh, an update on the water situation from last night. This one was just clean, regular water, but this one was all bubbly like club soda. Um, do not like. So I'm going over the comments of my last video and a lot of people seem to want to watch me make money. They want to watch me go to like the side of the street and try reselling umbrellas or try selling snacks to tourists. And I think that would be interesting, but I'm not actually legally allowed to work in Poland. I'm not sure if I would get like deported for trying that. But if I was going to try to make money, I would actually try to do it with my camera right here. I would go up to tourists and I would be like, hey, five pictures for five zloty or something like that. I would try to, I would try to leverage my photography skills. I'm not actually sure if I'm allowed to do that though, given like the constraints of this challenge, because not everybody has like a thousand dollar camera that they can go use to sell pictures with. And I want this to be as low barrier to entry as possible. Like if you had to go to Poland right now with a hundred dollars, how long could you last? Carrying a thousand dollar camera kind of defeats that. For breakfast today, I got two more of those cheese rolls because I fucking love these things. I think this is a Polish Hot Pocket. I'm not sure. It looks like a Hot Pocket and I like Hot Pockets. So I got one of these. I got an apple, I got another energy drink. This was $1.89, so um, it is a lot more hollow than I thought it would be, so that's disappointing. I hope the pigeons don't attack me again. While I was walking, a homeless guy started to seize. Nobody cared. I called an ambulance. So it turns out it's not a great idea to be homeless in Poland because if you end up having a seizure, people won't call an ambulance. They'll just think you're drunk. Um, I'm walking through the bike path right here and a dude, he slides off the bench. He's fucking convulsing. There's snot coming out of his nose. There's blood pouring everywhere. And people are just passing by him, walking through like nothing's happening. I tried to call an ambulance. Uh, apparently I tried calling 211 and that wasn't the right one. So I just called 911. Do you know how ridiculous that is? The entire time that I was waiting for the ambulance to get there, people were coming up to me telling me that nobody will do anything. Nobody will help him because he's just drunk. He's just a drunk homeless guy. This guy, he might die right here, but nobody cares. Don't be homeless in Poland. Oh, um, I went to McDonald's to uh, try to get food for all of the other people that were helping me. So I spent 20 zloty, so I spent about $5.08 on hamburgers. By the time I got back with the food, the ambulance was already there and everybody scattered. So yeah, that's another $5 out of the budget. Have you guys ever heard of the bystander effect? It's a psychological phenomenon where people will avoid calling the police because they assume that somebody else will. Like if you see something bad happening, you don't wanna, you don't wanna get involved, you don't wanna be the one to actually call the cops. So you just assume that if it's bad enough, somebody else will do it for you. But what this results in is nobody calling the police because everybody assumes that somebody else is gonna do it. Ever since I learned about that, I have made it a conscious decision that I will always call the police. I will always be the person that steps up and does it, even if it's an overreaction, because I assume that if I don't call the police, nobody will. So I just left all of my stuff at the coffee shop, my laptop, my tablet, my all of my clothes, everything. My camera, everything is at the coffee shop right there. I'm gonna go try to find a convenience store so I can get some Pepsi. And let's see if my stuff is still there when I get back. That'd be cool. There we go, I got the Pepsi. This is a buck 50. Now let's hope that my stuff is still there at the coffee shop. It is all still there, so that's good. Now for the Pista Resistance. We get to pick out the cheapest hostel in the entire city and you guys get to see what that looks like. Um, so let's open up Hostel World, let's go scroll through this and we're gonna sort by the lowest price. You can see that that is the art hostel. I've been to this hostel before, so I know what to expect, but I wanna share that with you guys. So let's select this one and we can see that we can get a bed for tonight for $6.17. Do you guys wanna see what $6.17 will get you in Krakow, Poland? This is the cheapest hostel in the entire city. And it's a little crowded. It's basically a two bedroom apartment with like 20 beds in it. The toilet handle's broken. But if you set your standards straight, it's perfectly fine. Like you've got beds, you've got good Wi-Fi, showers. 
you could go to Subway in America and end up with a sandwich that costs more than an entire night here. So it's perfectly fine. Before I close out of this episode, I've had some people complaining in my last video that I close out of my videos too abruptly, like I don't give you guys closure. So I just wanted to let you guys know 